Good evening. Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Green. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. We are here on the in the book of Revelation. We're actually going to begin chapter four tonight. The first session, we did one through three, and today we're going to pick up at chapter four. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of standing before your people and sharing the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now, Lord, for clarity of mind and thought that we may apprehend and comprehend the great truth and, and richness of your word. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> you know, kind of a recap. Now this, this book of Revelation, there are some things in here that, um, that really just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it'll blow your mind. Um, the, the book, as we said last time, it was broken up into the, the natural breakdown of the book. We see that in uh, chapter 1, verse 19, when he says, Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Uh, those things which we have seen, that was the vision of the Son of Man, and we saw that in uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 20. The, the, the vision of the Son of Man, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, he had been prophesied all the way back in Genesis. So he, the, the, the inference there is from then, the things which thou hast seen, those things that had already taken place, and then the, the things which are. Uh, that was the message to the seven churches. We looked at that last week also. And those seven churches in, in Asia Minor, the church at Ephesus, the church at Smyrna, the church at Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Uh, we said that church at, at Ephesus. It was a church that was sound in doctrine, but it was cold. And he told them they need to remember and repent and go back to their first love. Uh, that church at Smyrna, uh, that was a, that was a church that endured persecution, and he had nothing bad to say about that one because a church under persecution is always going to be a pure church. Uh, and he told them to just be not fearful unto death, because I'll give you a crown of life. Uh, uh, that church at Pergamos, uh, that was the worldly church. Uh, it had uh, gone into worldliness. It had uh, it was married to the world, and, and uh, they maintained their faith, but in a very perverse way. And he told them he's going to make war with them with the sword. But he also told them if they got their acts together, they were going to uh, uh, get manna and a new name. Uh, then there was the church at Thyatira. That was the church at Thyatira. They, they had good works and they had some spiritual growth, but they tolerated sin. And uh, they needed to be accountable. He told them they need to repent. And he would destroy the children that were produced in that in that church. But there was a word of consolation. He said if they got their acts together, they would uh, have power over the nations. And then there was that church at Sardis. That was the dead church. Uh, that church at Sardis, they, they uh, um, it was just dead. Uh, he said, but he said to watch, be watchful and strengthen that which is remained. Uh, uh, you know, uh, even a dead church can have some folk who are on fire. They ain't dead. But you stay around them dead folk, they ain't going to drain the life out of you. And he said, he's going. If you, if you don't get your acts together, he's going to come at you like a thief in the night. But if you do, he will clothe you in white and confess your name. And then there was the church at Philadelphia. That was that faithful, outgoing, missionary-type church. And uh, he didn't have anything bad. That was that victorious church and a church that's doing the work. A church that is just doing the work that it, it was designed to do, that it was ordained to do. Uh, he said, just hold fast. Is that what you're doing? Don't stop. Uh, and you're going to endure the lies, but he's going to make you a pillar in the temple. And then that last church, the church at Laodicea, that was the lukewarm church. And we need a cold or hot. And uh, he said he would rather you be cold or hot. Uh, if you're cold, we, you know where you're going. But if you're hot, you're on fire. But you neither. You're neither cold nor hot. And you make me sick to the stomach. 
I, I will spew thee, I will puke you out my mouth. The, the scripture says spew. But imagine somebody uh, uh, projectile vomit. Uh, uh, just that's just make God sit just, just to look at them because they 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 weren't doing nothing. Uh, but he said he he stand at the door and he knocks. And uh, if you get your acts together, you'll sit with me with my father. And that was the the letter to the seven churches. Those were the things that was the church age. Uh, he's talking about that age in which uh, uh, the where we are right now, the church age, and. Now, the, the book itself, really, as we go through, <clears throat> there is a series of sevens, a series of sevens, seven sevens. Uh, uh, the first group of sevens, we saw them, the seven churches. Then we're going to see the seven seals. We're actually going to be good. The, the seven seals. Uh, then you see the seven trumpets, the seven personages, seven vials, Seven dooms and seven new things. As we get to these groups of seven, I'm going to point them out as we go, and, and you're going to see what he, what, uh, what what he's talking about. So the 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 so we saw the seven churches, and uh, and after the end of the church age, something happens. The next scene in chapter four appears in heaven. So the church is on earth, and then the next scene that John sees is a scene from heaven. And what do you think took place from that scene to the next? What, anybody got any idea what happened? How did the church go from the earth to heaven? Remember, the things which shall be hereafter, the rapture. Uh, well, Pastor, I, don't, I didn't hear where the rapture came from. Well, it's in the white, it's in the, the margins between chapter 3 and chapter 4. That's what took place. The rapture. The church was raptured out, all, out of earth and went to heaven. And that's the next place John sees them. He said, verse 1, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That's what he's talking about. So the, the setting is heaven. And he said, and immediately I was in the spirit and the throne, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow around the throne, and in sight like unto an emerald, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I, four, four, I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeding lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now let me stop right there for just a second. The seven, seven spirits of God, he, he uses that language, but he's actually talking about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's one spirit, but he, he, he communicates it as seven different spirits because this, the it's multifaceted. And uh, let, let's kind of put a plug right there at um, Revelations 4 and 1, uh, uh, 4 and 5. And I'm going to take you just for a second to Isaiah chapter 11. Okay? And this is what it reads. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, number one, the spirit of under, and understanding, number two, the spirit of counsel, number three, and might, number four, and the spirit of knowledge, number five, and the, the fear of the Lord. So he got the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the sevenfold ministries of the Holy Spirit. So when he's talking about the the, the 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 seven spirits of God, that's the reference. Okay? So that's the reference. That's where it comes from. 
and before the verse Revelation 4 and 6 and before the throne there was a sea of glass like a crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four and twenty beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had the face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle boy look at him I should have made him a, a basket case seeing all that uh, I, I mean, it, it was it was uh, a an absolute marvel. Now, when he says uh, when he when he was describing the throne and the one that sat up on the throne, and he said like a jasper, that's like a, a diamond, a symbol of purity, a sardine stone, a ruby, blue. That's the uh, the emblem of justice, uh, and, and uh, the uh, the the emerald uh, that green emerald shows his favor. And the rainbow, uh, uh, it's like the everlasting covenant. So that's what he's he, he's communicating here. So this this some very symbolic language. And and the the twenty four thrones and the twenty four elders, representing the church and the Old Testament saints. The white robes was the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, and, and they were wearing crowns. Uh, Stephanos. Uh, 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 that was a uh, uh, that was the victor's crown. Or it's like a, in the in the Roman games, they the the, the uh, participants in the games when they got through, they were given these crowns that were it was like leaves that, that had gold plating, and they put on the head. And that's what these were. These were, these were a Stephanos, which is a, a victor's crown, a, pro, a crown that was given to the victors in the public games. Uh, uh, and it was metaphorically, it was an eternal blessing, eternal blessedness, which given to the prize of the genuine service of God in Christ. And the crown, that wreath, that was the reward of the righteous. Everybody's going to get one of those crowns. When you get to heaven, you're going to get one of those crowns. And you have the privilege of throwing that crown at the feet of the master. And, and that's what he's talking about here. And, 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 the, and the, when he gives the, 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 this view, the four beasts, the four living creatures, these were ministering angels full of eyes. Uh, that means they had vigilance, circumspection. Uh, they were like a lion, courageous, like a calf, uh, uh, service and, and, and indicating service and diligence. Uh, the face of a man, prudence and discretion, uh, and uh, like an eagle, get speed and movement. And, and what were they doing there? Well, let's see. And, and uh, when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks unto him that sat on the throne, and uh, let me go back to verse 8, just the one. And, and the, the four beasts which had of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and rest night not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who lives forever and ever. And, and what are you doing? What are they doing? Well, they're worshiping. Uh, night and day. That's what they're doing. Continuous worship. Continuous worship. And the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And that's how verse, uh, chapter 4 ends. So we, we, the, the, the scene takes the church from heaven, I mean from earth, the rapture takes place and the, every, everyone appears in heaven. And there's nothing there but worship. Continuous worship. Day and night. Continuous worship. And, and that brings us to chapter 5. And there, there is a, 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 a another vision that he sees. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and without Within on the backside seal with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? What do you think would that book represent? You want to guess? I'm going to tell you. It, it represents the title deed to the earth. 
I say the title deeds of the earth because under Roman law, a document was sealed with seven seals, a, a uh, so that it could not be violated. It was it would be rolled up and sealed, rolled up some more and sealed some more, rolled up some more and sealed some more, rolled up some more and sealed some more, and they have seven seals on there. So if the seals are broken. You know that something uh, has happened to the, 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 the if whoever breaks this, if you're not authorized to break the seals, if, if someone uh, unauthorized break the seal, that nullifies the document. So no one was found worthy to open the seals. And, uh, and uh, John, verse 2, John said, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And then look at verse 4, this is what John says. And I, and I wept much, because no man was worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. Uh, John wept because the title deed to the earth, it, it, it had taken, uh, uh, Satan had control over it. Adam ceded the title deed to the earth to Satan in the Garden of Eden. That's what made John cry. Uh, because the, the, here's the title deed to the earth, but, but it's like there's a lien on it. Uh, Satan was holding the lien. Uh, the, the sin of Adam encumbered the title deed to the earth and Satan had to lean. So John cried because no one was found worthy, either in heaven or in earth. And then look at verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb, uh, as it had been slain, having seven horns, uh, dealing that uh, indicating full of power, uh, and seven eyes, uh, indicating perfect wisdom, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Uh, here it is, he's talking about Jesus in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, and the four and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, uh, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal of Jerob, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them were ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. That means it's just a, 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 a number that he could not measure, that he couldn't count. Uh, um, myriads, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing, and every creature which was in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all of them that are, uh, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So this is the scene that we see in heaven. That's what we see, verses four, chapters four and five. This 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 magnificent scene. Where the four and twenty elders that represents the the the, the twelve of the, the, the twelve tribes of, uh, of Israel and the twelve apostles, so the four and twenty elders represented the New Testament church as well as the Old Testament church, and here they are around the throne singing praises to God continually, and and, and then when you get here. To chapter 6. 
This is where the first of the seed, the seven seals are broken. And when I, I saw, when the lamb opened one of the seals, I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard a beast say, Come and see. And <coughs> now, this, for this, this rider on the white horse with the bow and a crown was given unto him. This crown this crown Stephanos was the same type of crown that the uh, that the um, the 420 elders had. It was the victor's crown. It was not a, a, the a diadema is the crown of a true a true king. This was a Stephanos. This was the crown that you win in battle. It's not the crown that you win because that you are given when you are a a, 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 a true king. So this was something that and so what you see is a conquest. He is ruling by conquest, but. He's, you see, that he has a bow, but no arrows, which means it's a peaceful conquering. Okay? And I went in verse 4, and I went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And they that should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And behold, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Now that balance, uh, 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 and I heard a voice say in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of heat of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou not hurt not the oil and the wine. So what he's talking about in this case, so you see the, the red horse with war, uh, uh, and what follows war? Famine. Uh, the, 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 you see the, the horse, the, the rider with the, the black horse with the bear of balances in his hand? These are famine conditions. Now what? So the the peace was the false peace was broken. The peace was broken, and it, it it was interrupted by war, and the war led to famine. And what happened after war and famine? We'll look at this uh, next uh, horse. The fourth horse, and with verse seven, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see." And I look, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over four part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and the, and with the beasts of the earth. So here it is, following war and famine comes death. And this is part of that vision. So uh, uh, John had to be a basket case by now. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of the souls of them which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto them, unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that thou should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. See, there was going to be some more people die. These were not all the folk who were going to die. There were going to be some people who would die during the tribulation. What you are, what is being described here, is the tribulation. The tribulation, and we'll get into it a little bit later. The tribulation, uh, it was seven years of tribulation. 
uh, the first, the seven years, the first three and a half years of the tribulation, they were there was a false peace, and then the false peace was essentially interrupted by war. This represents the seventieth week of Daniel. If you read Daniel chapter nine, he talks about the the, the seventy weeks. This is the seventieth week of Daniel, at the middle of the tribulation. That's what he's describing here. So he's getting a vision of that. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun, the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely free figs. And she was shaken uh, when she was shaken with the mighty wind. Uh, 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 now, some of y'all too young to remember this, but years ago, Central Florida was full of orange trees, full of fruit trees. And I picked fruit before. And after, uh, now he uses the description of a, a, a fig tree casting untimely figs when they're, they're, they're shaking with the mighty wind. Well, after there was a cold snap, we used to pick the oranges off the tree. And if they, if it get real cold, they get frostbitten. We had we had to hurry and pick them, otherwise they would rot right on the tree. They just start falling off. But it was real easy to pick them once they'd been hit with frost. And what we used to do was get in the tree and just shake the tree, and all the all the oranges would fall to the ground, and we pick them up off the ground. It's a lot easier to get them. Right? You didn't get as much money because it was easy to pick. It was easy picking. You just get them off the ground because you didn't have to pluck them. You just shake the tree, and they fall. Well, that's the idea here. Like, 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 so the stars of heaven were going to fall like that. The, the stars of heaven, you look up in the sky and all the like meteorites all over the place because the stars are, 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 have lost their orbit. Chaos in the, in the uh, total chaos in the cosmos. That's what he's describing here. And heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid himself in the rocks, in the dens, and the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the rocks and the mountains, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb. What he's describing here is the wrath of the land. That's the sixth seal. Remember now, there were going to be six seals, six trumpets, and six vials. Well, actually seven. Uh, so seven, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven uh, vials or, or bowls. It depends on which... Uh, which uh, uh, version that you're reading but it's the same thing the vial these are a vial is something that actually like where you put some kind of um, fluid in or, or poison or something to drink uh, uh, something uh, if you had if you had some kind of uh, material extract that you got from a plant you put it in vials that's what they did for the types of medicines that they made back in those days in the, in the ancient days for the great day of the wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? So what he described here, the first seal was conquest. Verses 1 and 2. Uh, the second seal was war. The third seal was uh, inflation and famine. The fourth seal, death. The fifth seal, martyrdom. Those are the, the souls that were un, under the, the altar. And the sixth seal, these natural disasters, uh, uh, verses 12 to 17. And then at this point, there is a, a respite, so to speak, a, a, a relaxation. And uh, uh, if, if, if it had continued, John would have been a basket case. You know, this the the seven seals, the seven churches, the seven seals, and what's about to happen, we're going to go into, uh, next time, we're going to go with chapters um, 8 through 12. No. 8 through 11. 
and uh, we're gonna we're gonna pick it up next time. But these these sevens, remember that we got these the, these the, the keys are these series of sevens, and uh, the the first seal conquest, the second seal war, the third seal invasion and famine, famine, uh, the fourth seal death, the fifth seal martyrdom, the sixth seal natural disasters, which results in anarchy, and that's called the wrath of the Lamb. Okay, and then we're going to pick up next time at chapter 7. And um, if you read in advance, we go from 7 to... All the way through 10. 7 through 10. Okay, uh, next time. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you. We know that this is some serious stuff. You said in your word that blessed is he who reads and hears the prophecy of this book. This is the only book in the Bible that was promised where a specific blessing was promised to those that read it and hear it. So we just thank you for the opportunity because we know that the blessing is going to come as we study this word. We study this particular book. We can't wait to see what, well, we know what happened, but we still want to go through it again. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right. Four and twenty elders. Go ahead, Ethan. Okay.